Hi, I'm Jesse Skinner from Coding with Jesse, and today I'm going to take a look at the CSS Paint API. So the CSS Paint API, I just heard about it recently. It's a new feature from CSS Houdini. Uh, so I read about it in this blog post from LogRocket uh, by Sapun Kavinda. And so he goes into some good detail about what, what the CSS Paint API is and how you might use it to render random backgrounds. So basically, it's a new low-level API that lets you hook into the same mechanism that browsers use to paint images in backgrounds uh, in CSS. So anywhere you can use a, a URL image inside CSS, like in background image, border image, and so on, the Paint API lets you instead uh, register a paint worklet and let you write some JavaScript to paint to the background instead. And so it's one of a number of new APIs in browsers. Browsers are working on this, what's called CSS Houdini, uh, which is a set of these low-level CSS APIs that lets us as JavaScript developers or extension developers uh, hook into that and uh, do things we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Do you know how front-end bugs are affecting your users? Click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug CSS and other front-end issues faster, identify performance problems, and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video. So normally, if you want to set a background, you would use background image URL with a, with a URL. Uh, but of course that can't really change. So if you want to draw yourself, here's how you actually hook into the CSS Paint API. So you start off by using paint function in your CSS instead of URL. You write an external paint worklet file which defines some kind of paint method. And then you invoke the worklet in your main thread. So let's walk through this basic example. Uh, there's this grid of circles or bubbles and so we're gonna we're gonna copy that and try to get it working in our browser so I'm gonna make an index.html file uh, in my editor and just put in uh, this div so far uh, we can make it a valid HTML document but I think it would work even if we didn't so there we go and then the next thing we need to do is write some CSS that tells it to use a background image with our paint function. So we haven't yet defined our paint function, but I'll put in some a style tag that does that. There we go. And so here you see bubble paint. This is something we haven't yet defined, and we can give it whatever name we want. So in the blog post, it's bubble paint, so I'm going to stick with that. Now we need to create a new file. Uh, again, we can call it whatever we want. In this case, bubblepaint.js. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that and copy paste this into that file. So I'm going to make a new file, bubble-paint.js, and paint, paste that in. And let's have a look at what this is actually doing. So it's calling a function register paint, which is, in this context, a global function. Uh, we're giving it. Uh, a name of our paint and then we're passing it in a class so our class this class isn't named it doesn't need to be it has one method which is paint and the paint method gets two parameters here a CTX or context and geom or geometry so you can see we get a width and a height from the geometry and the CTX or context is very similar to a canvas context so if you've done any canvas drawing with JavaScript this should be pretty familiar to you. Begin path, arc, close path, fill. So uh, this code here is drawing a circle. In fact, it's looping row and column to uh, create a grid of circles. So let's have a look at that. The last thing we need to do, oh, before I move on, I should mention the context is very similar to a canvas context, but it's not exactly. So the blog post quotes Google saying a paint worklet's context is not 100% the same as a canvas. Uh, text rendering methods are missing. And for security reasons, you cannot read back pixels from the canvas. 
Uh, so you can't render text. That might limit the kinds of things you want to do, uh, at least as of now. So that might change in the future, maybe by the time you're watching this. By the way, this video is sponsored by LogRocket. LogRocket is the front-end application monitoring solution that lets you find out why your bugs are happening. So instead of just finding out that bugs are happening and that your users are experiencing bugs, you actually get to experience them just like your users are. It lets you see the state of the application, it lets you find out about performance problems, dig into network activity. You can even see your users' console logs and errors, and it works in just about any sort of front-end platform that you can imagine. So check out LogRocket at the link in the top right of the video to get 14 days for free. So, uh, yeah. Last thing we need to do is this little bit. So we need to register our paint worklet and tell it what URL the file is in. So I'm going to paste that here. And we need to, this is a, a code pen URL. So I'm going to change that to be our local bubblepaint.js. And this is all we should need to actually get it rendering. So let's have a look. And there we go. It's a grid of white gray circles. So uh, let's try to tweak it. We can change the color here with the fill style. I'm just going to change it to red so it stands out a little bit better. And there we go. That's it. So what happens if we make the width and height bigger? Will the circles be bigger? It, in fact, they're not. Uh, the circles are a fixed size, and it fills them. So it's like a repeating fill. So that's pretty cool. So uh, let's move on and see what else we can do. So if you want to customize your paint method for the element, uh, there's not really a way to pass parameters uh, to the function directly. So what we use instead are CSS variables. So we can add a couple of variables here. There's one for bubble size and bubble color. And so I'll do just that. We'll add those in. And then the other thing we need to do to actually use them inside our paint method, uh, first thing we have to do is create the static input properties method, which returns an array of CSS variables that we want to use. That's part of it. And then the other thing we need to do is access them. So uh, there's a third argument that we haven't been using yet called properties. So we need to add that in. And then that'll let us call properties.get to actually access the value of these CSS variables. So I'm going to paste that in as well. And so we don't need this size. And then the other thing we need to do is actually use the color in our fill style, so I'll paste that down there. And I believe that's good enough. So we can now refresh and see they're quite large now. So let's tweak the color here. We can make it green, let's say. And there we go. So we can make it any size, uh, let's say 70. There we go. It works. Hey, it's me again. Do you hate wasting time recreating bugs in your apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug issues faster, identify performance problems, and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video. You can do other things. Uh, here's an example to wrap it in a media query so that it has a different size for mobile than otherwise. So that's something you uh, probably couldn't do. You'd have to have different static images for mobile and different screen sizes. So this lets you actually parameterize that, which is pretty neat. Uh, now the article gets on to uh, something a little bit fun, which is actually doing random stuff. So there's no way you could really have a a random image unless you had a large number of images and you randomly picked one or some other complicated server-side rendering. Uh, but since it's JavaScript, we have access to math.random. We can randomly pick colors and all, all sorts of stuff like that. So let's copy this example. There's a new a new paint method here, random background for the body. So let's let's go with that. So we'll paste that in as well. And then we're going to 
make a new paint worklet for that. Let's call it random.js. So I'll make a new random.js and we will put that in there. And so let's just briefly review what this code is doing. So there's a helper function get random hex color. It's using math random and some magic numbers to generate a hex code, uh, a random color hex code. So it's using that, a color one and color two, and then it's going to create a gradient with those two random colors. So I think that will work already, how we have it set up. So let me just refresh my page and there we go. It's purple and brown or something. And if I refresh that, you can see every time it's going to be a different color. And actually, if I open up uh, DevTools, let's say, and resize, every time I resize, it's repainting the background. So it's extremely random. Um, I guess every time it needs to redraw the page, it's calling on that paint method to, to draw the background again and again. All right. So that's pretty interesting. And so as for browser compatibility, it's uh, you can go to this, is Houdini ready yet? And here's the Paint API. So it's already it's shipped in Chrome 65, in Microsoft Edge 79, Opera 52, and Samsung Internet 9.2. It is not yet in Firefox, although there's an intent to implement, so it's coming. It's coming in Apple Safari as well, and there is a W3C spec, so it's coming. It's uh, it's mostly here. It's on its way. Uh, so you might want to, because it's not everywhere, you might want to, uh, there's a polyfill available from Google Chrome Labs. Uh, or you can use browser support detection. So let's have a look at how we would do that. We can use this if statement, check if paint worklet is defined in CSS. If it is, then the feature is available. If not, then it's not. So in our JavaScript, we can use that to be sure that this is not going to throw an error. Uh, CSS.paintworklet wouldn't be defined in, in older browsers or browsers that don't support the feature. So this would throw an error normally, so we can add a safety check to make sure that we're, we're not causing any errors. And in CSS itself, we can use the at supports uh, directive, I guess, to check if uh, if this is actually supported yet. So we'll use, we'll use that as well so we can um, split our CSS up so that we're only using the uh, paint method in browsers that support it. This isn't strictly necessary because if, C if there's CSS being used that the browser doesn't know about, it's just going to ignore it anyway. Uh, but we might want to do something where we uh, have a fallback background. So maybe maybe our background is yellow by default and then if the br if the browser supports a random uh, a paint worklet rather, then it's going to use that instead. So it's going to overwrite what we did there. Uh, so I should if I refresh, I don't see the yellow because of course my browser does support it. Uh, so we could do the same with the the div and maybe have part of it in here and part of it out here and then we might want to define a back an actual URL background image for example um, I should move that above so in this example I don't have a URL standing by to show you but you could have a static image as a fallback and then if the paint worklet is available then it's going to use that instead so that's how you can get it working in multiple browsers, as they demonstrate here. So you actually don't need that support query necessarily. You could just define two CSS rules in a row, and then the if the second one works, it'll overwrite the first. And if it doesn't, then the fallback will, will work. So uh, Other interesting use cases, the blog post talks about using uh, an image with placeholder so that you can pass in an actual URL inside a CSS variable and then 
Uh, interestingly, it seems you can hook into image.state so that you show a certain thing when it's ready and you show or you, you, you draw the image if it's ready and if it's not ready, you draw a placeholder like a spinner or a, a loading. I guess a spinner wouldn't work because you, you don't have the ability to animate in there, uh, but some kind of placeholder. And then if, if it fails to load, then you can even draw an error message, have a control over that. Now, unfortunately, it seems that that example doesn't work. Uh, in my browser, it says only a few browsers support the image syntax for CSS properties. And so that's referring to this here. So you have to actually register the property using a special syntax. And it, it seems Chrome doesn't support that yet. I'm not sure which browser does. But I guess that's something that's coming. That could be interesting. Uh, another cool example is brush stroke background. So using the same effect to highlight some text and actually paint it depending on the size of the text. Uh, so that's something you couldn't necessarily do before. I guess you could use possibly an SVG background, but for certain kinds of effects uh, where you want to know the, the width and the height and actually maybe have a different painting algorithm depending on the size, uh, something like that, uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, so who knows uh, what else is possible with this? It's very new. I think uh, it has a lot of potential. Uh, it'd be up to you or, or whoever to come up with some new uh, interesting use cases for this. Um, but I think it's uh, very powerful. It's good to know about. Um, I would say it, it, there's a temptation to, to uh, feel like it's going to save bandwidth or something because you don't have to ship an image. Uh, it's just JavaScript. But you, you, there's still a network hit. It has to load that worklet, that paint worklet. And the JavaScript has some size, so you're going to want to weigh that as well, especially since it seems to force you to have the JavaScript in a separate file. So there's still going to be a network request there. Um, but nonetheless, it, I'm sure there's some situations where it's useful for possibly performance, but more likely just to, to achieve things that you wouldn't be able to do before. Um, so it's pretty cool. Check it out. And uh, keep an eye out for other Houdini features that are coming out. Um, this is not the only one, and it won't be the last, I don't think. So I hope that helps you out, maybe inspires you. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.